Brock. <laughs> Thank you, Brock. Uh, so I'm Brock Thomas. I'm uh, from Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I uh, graduated from college in 2003, where I actually got a real estate degree from the University of Missouri. So I knew I wanted to go into real estate uh, in high school. I owned a lawn business and met a guy who owned quite a bit of rental property, and I always did a lot of work for him um, and mowed some of the lawns as he was having turnovers. So that just kind of sparked my interest in, so I went and got a degree in that. And I came home from school, and every day I would tour properties going into the office and was looking for deals. Um, learned the market by selling to uh, some of my friends and their parents, and then leads that came in. I was just the guy at, at my real estate company that would take any deal. I mean, I was 23 years old. Not a lot of people trusted me. Um, I guess at that point, as you're just getting in the market, um, and so um, I kept bringing properties back to my parents. I had them get a home equity line of credit, and we bought our first property, and after that was the next property, and then after a while, my dad said, stop working me so hard, I'm older, and <laughs> don't wanna work like that. So I started, uh, so, so at that point, I still didn't really have any money, you know, we flipped so, so I could, could have money to, to buy additional properties, and so, I started forming some different uh, different businesses with uh, guys that had um, you know talents that that I didn't have. So at first I knew nothing of construction. So I found a guy with construction uh, with a construction background and he had some money. Um, started doing deals with him as well as then I formed up uh, three other guys and we threw money together and we started uh, buying properties. Uh, most of my you know, most of my partners didn't really want to hold rental properties, even though I knew that that's why I was in the business. So I was flipping quite a few properties, you know, throughout the recession and, and times of that nature. And then, um, so I just started holding a lot more properties over, you know, the last 10 years on my own. Um, right around the time of the pandemic, I sold off around 50 of my units. I was just thinking, man, the market's so hot, you know, What's this next cycle going to look like? And then the pandemic hit and prices go wild. So I didn't time that right, but but it was good for me. I mean, it put liquidity into um, into my business, and so it gives me a lot more purchase power. Um, and right now, I'm working with Ryan to really scale my team and um, try to do more deals and pull myself out of a lot of activities that I still shouldn't be doing. I'm currently trying to recruit. Brock so hard to, to coach people on flipping and holding. I want to make that public. I want that much peer pressure on Brock to coach for Ryan. Because it's very hard to find someone with the systems and, and, and that, he, that he has for flipping uh, are unbelievable and, and the holding. And, and he's worked on, you know, he's, he's got property acquisition managers that are out there looking for property and, and putting the deal. He's got multiple construction crews. And, and Hal's the same way with this as well, too. Um, um, they're very elaborate in their technique because at some point you can only do so much yourself um, and, and you need to start leveraging just like with the real estate team. There's really no difference there. So building out that team becomes something fun to do too. Building out a mortgage team is something fun to do. Building out a title team is something fun to do. All wonderful things we love to coach and train on here at ICC, um, which is kind of neat and it's fun to watch these guys take it next level and multiply off their business and their production. There's so many places you can go in this business. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. So I love it. I love it. Bro, bro let's go. Thank you. That, that's exactly. And, and you've done the same recently, bro, right? I mean, you've been, you've been hiring and really building out um, your acquisitions team. And, you, and your, so talk about that real quick. Um, well, I, I've, uh, I've really did pretty much everything myself for a lot of years. So I was running uh, the property management um, running the flip crews as well as selling houses. I wasn't selling 100 a year, but I was still had a decent amount of transactions that I was doing. And I, uh, that's really when I met Brian. So I think it was like 2014 or 15, I sat down with Brian. I remember uh, we went to a, like a local restaurant inside of the bar and, and, and we're just talking about where my career was at. I'm just sucking down like, Baca soda. I remember that. Oh my god. I mean, I was so stressed out because I was, you know, oh my I was god. all this construction and the market's starting to come back, you know, and like I have all of these past clients and friends like, hey, you know, like we, we want to sell our house now and move into this other one and like transactions are starting to become a, a lot more easy to do. So, um, and then I remember another one. I'm at a court. Uh, so he, he tells me to move over and this is, you know, these are the problems that I can solve for you. Um, and so um, he, he found me my first admin um, that worked out. I had somebody who was just doing some data entry and book work for me. 
Um, but it, that is a recently, and then, then I lost her, and then my life went to hell for like two years, hiring the wrong people. So that's when I looked right back up there. It was like, <laughs> save my life again, man. Um, but no, since 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 we've been working together, uh, we we got the right operations person in there who's who's running all the property management for us um, and doing a lot of other things inside the office. Um, I've had a sales agent uh, that's worked for me for for quite a while that's just been a blessing. I mean, she did so many things that were outside of what, what she really needed to do um, through those hard years. Um, we recently brought on two different acquisition people and we're, and we're working on a third one that would be a pretty high level person. Um, we have somebody else working in an administrative role and just kind of finding out where their talents are. I mean, she is in a big SC behavior, but she's really making everybody accountable for what they're doing. I mean, that's what she seems like she, she does the best. So working with my construction manager and holding us to the budget, it's like, hey, if we say this is gonna take $40,000 to fix up a house, if you come in and you spend 50, like, we need to be tracking that. It's like, I can't watch the numbers all the time and then we're just going over on stuff. So she's starting to watch that and really track where, uh, where everybody is and hold people accountable. So we're just, you know, we're kind of in the infancy stage of, of trying to grow a more professional organization and, and pull me out of roles and stop me being the bottleneck of my business. So um, I feel like we've made a lot of changes over the last, you know, eight to 10 months. One of the things that I think is unique, that is in common with all three of you and uh, even Eric this morning and his team and, um, and Claudia and her teams is that you guys do have systems. You do meet with your people on a regular basis. You do have dashboards where we're looking at all those key metrics, right? Those activity-based indicators, those results-based indicators, and we're tracking. And that's what a system is, and that's what brings a team together, right? And that's one of the things you guys have all embraced in one way or another, right? Um, so, that, so that we are formalized in some sense, right? And that, you know, and I think that, and that's been kind of new to you because what he's done, which is very unique, um, is, well, I wouldn't say, yeah, it's pretty darn unique actually, is, you know, you've, he's got his construction crew in there. He's got the leader, leader, well, not his crew, but the leaders of his construction division. He's got property acquisition managers in there. He's got sales managers in there. He's got admin staff and operations in there. He's got sales agents in there. And, you know, we're creating metrics for all these different things shown on one dashboard to hold ourselves all accountable to doing what we need to do to get the results we want. Patrick, you have the same thing. Just different people, different different bus, different seats, right? Tell, tell me about this. Absolutely. absolutely, you know, the best part, and this is really the first extended time I've been away from Nashville, where I've had co-team leaders, um, director of operations, and it's it's uh, it, it feels good to be to see things move forward. You know, when something pops up, and we all know everything's popped up since y'all been here. Um, a lot of things are being taken care of, which would have been my domain. And to see the teamwork, and that's the, that's the cultural aspect of, of doing yes. all those things, and I think promoting from within, if you can find that person um, from within, um, because they already know each other. Um, so it's been absolutely huge to kind of sit here, and um, I wouldn't say I'm 100% not on my phone, because I certainly am. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot different um, dealing with issues. I mean, um, in terms of setting up those people um, and then just um, cruising at a little bit higher altitude. I, I think that's fabulous. The, probably the, here's bonus coaching, bonus coaching for everyone. You're on this trip, okay? All those times you have to take phone calls and deal with problems back home, all those times, I'm talking to my wife too because she's, she, I'm with her the most and I see it happen from time to time. Every time, those are the leaks in your plumbing that you need to fix so you can go on vacation next time, okay? So we talk about the need to let go. We talked about the need to let go and we let go with leverage with people, leveraging work to people, leveraging responsibility to people, leveraging pay to people, all those things and letting go to be less of a warrior and more of a chief. Right? Okay? So when you're here and you have to dive back into your business and get back on that phone and solve problems and put out fires, understand those are gaps that need to be filled. Because I mean, the only way to find where your leaks are in the plumbing is to run water through it and see where it's linking. Well, you're running water through it right now. 
Don't not take a vacation because you can't find the leaks. Take the vacation to find the leaks. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it is actually productive seeing how it runs without, assuming you have somebody back home. You know, it's not, it doesn't work if you don't. <laughs> you know, don't do it if you're a solo agent yet. <laughs> but a caveat, I think, you know, there's, you got other problems if you didn't get that one. But the, you get the idea, right? So that's it. Anytime you have to get back is how do I make it so I don't have to do those things? Or what person is, is missing? You know, who do I need? Where do I need to go so that I don't have to put those fires out? Because if you're, because you should be able to be here and have no fires to put out. You should. And there's no excuse for that. Because there is some, every responsibility in this business can be leveraged. Cloudy didn't have to take a call. Cloudy didn't have to take a call. Remember that? Be a flyer, be like Claudio. You know? So that's the idea. I love it. So there's always, we're always working on that stuff. We're always working on that stuff. Every one of you had to take calls. Those are your plumbers. <gasps> well, guys, um, I want to make sure that I, I loved having you guys up here. It was wonderful sharing your stories with these guys, different types of businesses. The commonality between the three, our systems, discipline. And I want you to see the discomfort, overcoming, leveraging, and letting go from all three of these guys, investing in other leaders to leverage their business all the way through. Um, it's not easy. I mean, you, you could tell Patrick's saying it's still a process. This is challenging. Uh, Brock maybe wasn't showing it and Hal wasn't showing it, but I've seen it behind the scenes with both of them. Um, it is a process. It is not easy, um, but they're doing it and they're seeing the difference on it. And, and quite frankly, never stop until the phone calls stop. Never stop until there's no leaks in the plumbing. You keep getting uncomfortable and letting go and filling those gaps until the phone calls stop. Then all you do is you take the leaders that you've replaced yourself and you help them fill their gaps. And you just keep helping people fill gaps until you got people to help fill other people's gaps. Make sense? If you want to see how these guys get big, that's how they get big. Leadership. These three guys have it. Give them a round of applause.